Hello and welcome to Orion Today. I am Joe Johnson and joining me once again is Kim Urbanowski. Hi Joe, how are you? Great, thanks for being here. I'm always happy to be here. <laughs> how was your weekend? My weekend was um, not exciting. Um, it was relatively relaxed, but um, I was kind of getting stuff ready for chamber things. So I'm, oh, yeah. I was working a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, it yeah. Happens. It was busy for me too. Uh, lots of events. We say this on every episode of Morning Today, but lots of events happening uh, in the community. One fun thing, or I mean, it's all fun, but one personal <laughs> thing I got to do that wasn't work related is I drove out to Motor City Nightmares, which is a con in Novi. And uh, they have a lot of vendors that sell horror related stuff. But the reason uh, I went is they had a couple of celebrities there and you know how I am yes. with celebrities. So um, I got to meet a couple of them. One, uh, his name is Richard Mazur and he has a long history on television and film. He was on Rhoda and, and movies and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And he was in one of my favorite horror movies, The Thing. He was the guy who loved the Huskies in The Thing. Oh, right. Um, but yes. one thing that we had that w was kind of an icebreaker for me is we both appeared in the movie 61, which was filmed at Tiger Stadium in 2000 for HBO, and it was directed by Billy Crystal. And I played a reporter, and he played a reporter. So I went up to him, I said, hi. I said, hey, we starred in a movie together. And he was like, what, were you in the bleachers? And uh, I, said, I said, no, I was a reporter. And he goes, oh, yeah, you were in the press pool. And I said, yes, I was. He remembered no me. Way. And we filmed it 20 years ago. That's cool. So we chatted about Tiger Stadium. For the movie, they painted the old Tiger Stadium Yankee green, which was horrifying for a Tiger fan. Yeah. Um, but I worked on the film for two weeks, and uh, it was cool that he remembered me from the That the is film. really cool. So do you, do you have like a them. bucket list of like you have to have a list of people. These are the people I still need to meet. Right? Uh, Cuz I feel like you there's have There's a few. There's a like I, one of my all-time favorite actors is Tom Hanks. I'd love to meet Tom Hanks. Oh, yeah. Bill Murray uh, and of course Harrison Ford. Oh well. Um, those are like the top 3 I would love to meet someday, but yeah, yeah. So you when will. I wasn't doing that, I was working, uh, shooting video. Um, one of the, uh, the things that happened over the weekend, which I personally enjoyed, uh, was Golling Buick GMC had another car cruise. Uh, right. For those of you who don't know, uh, Golling has a number of charity car cruises throughout the, the season, throughout the summer, uh, and they all raise money for charitable organizations. Uh, they did one for the VFW and the Veterans Memorial and uh, that sort of thing. And um, the most recent one that they had in downtown Lake Orion uh, this past weekend raised money for uh, the the Shop with a Hero program, yes. where police and uh, military take kids shopping for Christmas gifts in December, uh, and it's a really amazing program. Yeah. I've shot video of that, and it's it's hard not to get emotional when right. you see it. Um, but there were beautiful cars parked uh, in downtown Lake Orion. The streets were closed off to traffic, and um, lots of classic cars and muscle cars, and it was a absolutely beautiful day and the cool thing about uh having a car show in downtown lake orion is that the setting is just so perfect it's so beautiful historic buildings form the background um and there's the police uh, department they had a, yeah. a presence there as a matter of fact <clears throat> there was a, a simultaneous fundraiser going on uh for the family of guy higgins who was a uh, Lake Orion Police Reserve officer who passed away uh, from cancer a couple mm. of weeks ago. Uh, so his family was there taking donations and stuff like that to help nice. support the family, which was uh, a nice uh, addition to this sure. show to raise money for that cause as well. Uh, there's 20 Front Street, which used to be an antique store if you remember right. way back. Um, so it's just such a perfect uh, setting for a classic car show. and. Um, they got, it looks like they got more cars than they were expecting because it looked like there was some overflow on uh, yeah, Front one. Street and a little parking lot back there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a good time. It's a show that I look forward to every year and just wander the streets of downtown Lake Orion and you can stop and uh, get some, uh, you know, uh, something good to eat, shop, something good eat. to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots, so much to see and do. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that I've been talking to people about a lot lately is I don't remember in the history of downtown Lake Orion it being so busy and at no vacancies and uh, right. so much going on in, in the village there. Yeah, we were down there um, a couple days ago at the beginning of last week and it was even on a Monday, a lot of people walking around and it was super busy. 
Um, but you know, there are so many really good restaurants down there now yeah. that you just, and even a couple of years ago, there were a lot of really good restaurants, but now you just have so many good choices. Yeah. And, and um, the entertainment's great, the places are, are unique, they're different, they're you know, individually owned by people who are in the community, which I love. So yeah. um, it's a hopping place to be. Now, speaking of the village, uh, the village is undergoing a major change. Uh, village manager Joe Young yeah. was, I guess you could say, was sort of forced to retire. Not that anyone drove him out, no. but he <laughs> had injured himself on yeah. the job, and he realized that he just couldn't keep uh, doing yeah. what he was doing. Uh, so they had a, a little uh, going away party for him, a little open house at Village Hall. He was up and around, he was looking good, but uh, he said his back was still hurting him and yeah. he was having some knee problems. And his wife is undergoing some uh, rehabilitation too. I guess she's been having some problems too. Gracious. So after five years uh, serving the village as village manager, he decided to step down. Uh, so they're in the process of finding a replacement for him. Uh, they do have an interim uh, village manager right mm -hmm. now. I'm trying to recall his name. Do you recall? I, I don't. O'Brien, I think, is his last name. It's um, it's hard to it's hard to come in as an interim for something like that, especially yeah. when you follow someone like Joe. I mean, he's he was right. just such a um, a wonderful addition. I mean, he was in Oxford before that for for quite a while. Twelve years, I something think, something like was, that, yeah. right? And um, just a lovely, lovely man. I mean, we've you know, I've worked with him on a couple things, but I think the the most surprising thing to me was seeing him downtown one time doing um, balloon animals. I had no idea that that was a skill that he had. Yeah. But that was something he liked to do. So, um, yeah, you're going to see a, a, yeah. a clip of him making balloon animals uh, at, uh, I think it was the Christmas tree lighting. Right. And uh, yeah, he's so kind and so friendly. And um, we, uh, in this clip right here, we actually visited with him on his very first day <laughs> on the job, uh, t April 2017, wow. five years ago. Uh, he gave us a little tour, introduced us uh, to some of the, his coworkers and stuff, yeah. and uh, and I threw a little clip in here uh, at the firehouse. Um, you could see Joe at a lot of events uh, there he is, in yeah. the park, uh, uh, just just mingling with residents and making balloon animals right. and. Um, and so many times when I would just be in downtown Lake Orion just to grab a bite or something, I would pass him on the street. He, he yeah. lived in the village yeah. and um, they said he had a reputation for just popping in on business owners and saying, Is, are things good? Is there anything you need? Wow. How can I help? And uh, yeah. You got to stay connected that way. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a, it's, that's why he was so good at his job because he really was present at things like that and people people knew who he was I think that was important yeah yeah so uh, we're sad to see Joe go it was uh, really great working with him and I'm sure we'll see him around uh, in the village uh, in the future I guess he's gonna be doing some consulting work from here on out yeah. Um, something else that was a lot of fun about a week ago is uh, Orion Township hosted an international bocce ball tournament. Yes. Uh, I'm sure many yeah. of you have driven past the Palazzo del Bocce mm -hmm. on Lapeer Road many, many times. I don't know if you've stopped in, but you should if you haven't. The food is amazing. It they is. got bocce ball courts. And, um, and for the first time in about four years, they hosted this international tournament right. where players fly in from all over the world and compete in this competitive, it's very uh, competitive. basketball tournament. And um, it was, uh, they had an wow. opening ceremony on Wednesday, two weeks ago, Wednesday, I think it was. And uh, they introduced the players to everybody. And then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they played about 75 total games wow. uh, where each team, there was two players representing each country, and each team played uh, doubles round and then uh, individual singles round. And it was a round robin tournament, right. and they tally up all the scores and everything. And then on Saturday, uh, ONTV was there to televise uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the championship uh, round. Uh, and that was a long day. Yeah, uh, we yeah. got there about 8:30 in the morning, and I got out of there about nine o'clock at night, <laughs> and <laughs> oh. I was on my feet for about 10 hours uh, that day. Uh, we had five cameras That's there. We streamed crazy. live uh, all over the world. Had thousands of viewers watching. No kidding. Um, it was really cool. It was so, who was the overall winner? Who was the big winner? So, Italy, which you'll see here at the end <laughs> if we get that far. Uh, Italy, where I would imagine bocce was invented. Uh, they they were amazing. Uh, yeah. These guys. 
they would, you know, roll the bocce ball and it would just consistently stop like within an inch of the polino, which is the yeah. little ball. Uh, you can see it right there. They were, they were just so precise. You know, that's not easy to do. Yeah. We, and I've played it a couple times when I've been to Palazzo de Bocce. Um, certainly not that level of skill, but it's not it's not that easy to do. Yeah, and it's I even harder my... in your backyard because yeah. it's like your backyard's Bumps. bumpy and yeah. you try to, you know, roll the ball toward the Polino and it hops over it. Yeah. Um, they got these beautiful surfaces at the Palazzo and uh, this was the very Ooh, last <laughs> play of the game and uh, this declared uh, Italy the winner. Uh, Italy, the two players from Italy won $10,000. That was the top prize. Really? Uh, San Marino uh, came in second and that prize wasn't too shabby. They got $6,000. Hmm. And uh, the top, I think, uh, what was it? Top six teams all came away with some sort of cash prize. Um, and huh. uh, I had uh, I joined their pizza party after the fact. And so I'm sitting there with these people from all over the country and what cool. or all over the world. world. Yeah. And what amazed me is they were all conversing with each other and more <coughs> often than not they just sort of agreed to talk in broken English basically. Um, but it was <laughs> it was like being at the UN, like right. having people I had Austria directly across from me, I had Chile to my right and uh, <laughs> it was it was a, a lot of fun and How cool. those guys were fun and funny and uh, what's interesting is the the guy from Chile that was sitting to my right, they brought out these pizzas, and one of the pizzas had pepperoni and sausage on it. And the Chile guy says, what's that? And I said, that's sausage. And he said, sausage? Like he was right. miming a sausage link. And I said, well, it's <coughs> ground sausage. And he was like, oh. And I thought, <laughs> wow, people in Chile have never had sausage, sausage. pizza. That like, that's funny. really blew my mind. But that was a lot of fun, and I'm sure we'll get back over there another time to do their next tournament. But, That's so cool. Uh, Palazzo is, is just such a neat gem in Orion Township. And if you haven't been, you got to go. You should, actually. It's very good food. Yeah. It's good food oh, and, and good that, fun. They fed us well. Like, oh, they For lunch, do. we had meatballs and pasta. And, uh, it, was in, it was incredible. <laughs> it's a good place. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. So a lot going on. Um, as a matter of fact, another big event that happened this past weekend over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was the fundraiser for Camp Agawam known as Tommy Stock. Uh, Tommy Stock sits on, or, or Camp Agawam sits on Tommy's Lake. Yes. That's how Tommy Stock gets its name. And it was a, a big uh, concert uh, festival that raises money for the, for the camp and for the Fire Bowl, which is yeah. their little pavilion there, or amphitheater, I guess you can call it. And on the final day, which was Sunday, it was a big fundraiser for the Real Men of Orion, Orion campaign, yeah. which raises money for breast uh, cancer um, survivors and people going through it. Um, so here's the new story that I put together on uh, Tommy Stock and uh, the event Boobs, Tubes, and Dudes <laughs> uh, from this past weekend. Camp Agawam was founded in 1918 by the Boy Scouts of America. Orion Township purchased the property in 2014 and celebrated the camp's 100th anniversary in 2018. The Friends of Camp Agawam hosts an annual fundraiser to help preserve the camp and make ongoing improvements to the Fire Bowl. The annual music festival known as Tommy Stock kicked off on the evening of Friday, July 29th with a performance by Bernadette Catherine and the Lonely Days Band. They were the first of six bands to perform at the Fire Bowl on Friday and Saturday with more live music over at the Tiki Bar Tent. So we've got tons of vendors, there's merchandise for sale, we've got excellent food trucks, frozen drinks at the Tiki Bar, live music at the Tiki Bar, uh, the beach is open, it's a family friendly event so uh, mom and dad can maybe have a frozen margarita while the kids are, are in, in, uh, enjoying the lake. Tommy Stock gets its name from Tommy's Lake, which campers can access from the beach at Camp Agawam. The music festival allows the friends of Camp Agawam to make ongoing improvements to Orion Township's hidden gem. We've taken all the money that we make from Tommy Stock to do these improvements, and there's still a lot more to go. I think you saw how hard we're working just to get uh, power and stuff to do, do a show out here. So we need to upgrade the power, permanent stage with a nice roof over it so we don't have to get this, this clunky tent out here. And so there's a lot still to do that so we can utilize this uh, fire bowl a lot more often here in Lake Moran. On Sunday, the Tiki Bar area and the beach are turned over to the Real Men of Orion campaign and their annual Boobs, Tubes and Dudes event. 
Ticket sales, donations, and sponsorships raise money for the American Cancer Society to help those battling breast cancer and their families. Uh, Real Men uh, started in Oakland County, I think it's six years now, and I, I was an inaugural um, Real Men Wear Pink ambassador and actually won that first year for fundraising and then just kind of got hooked and got involved and uh, over time we built the Real Men of Orion team because quite frankly there's a lot of work to do on my own and so it's nice to bring in some guys to help. Uh, we raised a lot of money because of the community jumping in and wanting to be a part of it and, uh, and really with everything that arises in our community um, that people come together pretty quickly to, to uh, help. So in this it's become kind of a community wide effort. We have a lot of businesses involved. We do events through October and uh, most of our events are in October and September. Um, so it's just a great, uh, it's a great way to highlight what our community is in terms of a very giving community that always steps up and it makes it a lot easier, it just makes it a lot of fun. The Real Men of Orion campaign kicks into high gear in October, which happens to be Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They already have several events planned in Lake Orion. Yeah, we're working on events now. Um, we're going to have uh, a tailgate up at uh, 313, which we've done in years past, which is a blast uh, outside and back of the, the restaurant there. We do, we're do. we going to be doing our karaoke for a cure. Um, and we've got our first one booked for October 14th, which happens to be my birthday. So we're kind of doing a, uh, we did a birthday one last year. Um, uh, so we're going to, we'll be signing up more bars and restaurants. We're starting to set that calendar, which will all be available on our, uh, our website, which is realmenoforian.com. I think we're changing it to .org this year, so uh, you might want to check that. And, uh, or on Facebook. Uh, we, we try to be real active on Facebook to let everybody know what's going on. Welcome back. We are joined here uh, in the studio by some friends of ours from Orient Arts Center. Uh, this is Mo and this is Holly. Um, and they are here to talk about the Dragon on the Lake Festival that's coming up very soon. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're yeah, so we're what, about a month away? And, uh, yeah, we are a month up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yep. Um, the Dragon on the Lake will be happening this year, um, Thursday, August 25th, and it will run through Sunday the 28th. We'll close off with our Dragon Boat races. This has become, I think, Lake Orion's biggest event of the year, wouldn't you say? I think so, and, and I will say that we just did um, something with the township uh, for um, a, a grant that we did, and we were talking about heritage and what, what things are, you know, in Orion are, are tied back to our heritage, and I, you know, we explained Dragon on the Lake is one of those things. We're dragons, mm -hmm. and, and where did that come from? So, yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, I don't know if you know, but Dragon on the Lake actually was inspired by the myth that there was a dragon that w has been seen in Lake Orion. And the Art Center has been hosting this event since 2008. Wow. Um, so it's, it's really become the end of the summer um, bash for Lake Orion and it is our biggest fundraiser for the Orion Art Centers and there's so many ways we can get involved. Right. Now it, it was created to celebrate the Art Center's anniversary, right? It was 30 years I think it was, was the Dragon on the Lake was, they wanted a big celebration to celebrate the Art Center's anniversary and it just really took off and it grows every year. What, what kind of events and things do you have planned for this year's event? Right, so um, opening Thursday night, we have our um, Dragon Pub. We're gonna have, every night we're gonna have live entertainment. The first night is a band um, called um, Freelance, and it's a really great cover band. They cover 80s to today cover bands um, songs. And the um, following days, we have live entertainment on both um, tents, the Dragon Pub and the Tiki um, tent. Yeah, and the cover bands are um, bands that have been coming back every single year. So Lake Orion, you're familiar with them. Um, on Saturday evening, we are going to have, I'm sorry, Friday evening, we're going to have Sunset Boulevard, um, the 80s hair band, come back out. And then, <laughs> of course, on Saturday, um, Square Pegs comes back out. Ooh, yes. I always love Square they Pegs. Yeah. They're good. Yeah, they're they're really so good. fun. Every one of Lake Oregon loses their voice after <laughs> this weekend. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So I have a question though, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if it's been done for a while, because I have to admit, for the last mm -hmm. two years, I haven't been able to go because mm -hmm. we've been at band camp with my kids. But I do remember one year we had this big. Remember the big foam, the big foam? Yeah, thing they, were, they shot ice. foam into oh the my, crowd. That, yeah, yeah. I lost my voice on that one. That <laughs> one was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. So I'm not yeah. sure if it's coming back, but I would, mm -hmm. I, 
Listen, if you send a survey out, I'll check the box <laughs> for that. <laughs> now, one thing I'm excited about is uh, on Friday, August 26, which mm -hmm. happens to be my birthday, uh, Woo! Uh, right the Lighted Boat Parade yes. is returning for the first time in a few years. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are so excited um, to actually have um, a great Lake Orion um, Lake Association here, mm -hmm. and they are actually going to be hosting the Boat Parade. Um, the boat parade is so fun. It, again, it, this event has really become the end of the summer event. Um, so what happens is everyone decorates up their boats and they come out. Uh, we have a panel of judges. It is free to enter this. So if you have a boat, decorate it, go on the website and go register your boat. Um, there are cash prizes and not only that, you get bragging rights. Right. Oh, of yeah. course. You can also view the <laughs> parade rights. from Greens Park um, <laughs> at 8.30 on Friday. Yeah. And I just found out that um, on Lola's Facebook page, they have tutorials on how to help you decorate your boat. So if oh, you're cool. thinking, like, I don't know how to do that, that seems pretty overwhelming. <laughs> they have tutorials, <coughs> videos, ideas, mm -hmm. and just great information there for you to look at to get your boat registered. And yeah. the, that yeah. one boat that that with the fire it'll be right that should be returning oh, this shaky. year uh it was lost for a little while mm -hmm. uh, the oh. the guy who mm. always piloted that boat which wasn't an official entry but mm. um it would always lead the parade he moved out of state and everyone said well, where's his boat mm -hmm. apparently they tracked it down and it should be making yeah. uh, an there's appearance there's a lot of progress being year. made on yeah that. they uh, it's it's currently being re um being fixed up so mm -hmm. you know we're hoping that it will be out because that ha is a boat that that everyone right. looks forward to. I mean, right. who doesn't love seeing a dragon breathing boat? <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. That was just always the uh -huh. coolest thing. And when I tell people yeah. that uh, I'll be working on my birthday, they're like, why are you working on your birthday? And I'm like, well, I'll be on a pontoon <laughs> on the lake, yeah. a beautiful summer night uh -huh. with food and, and friends. Uh -huh. It's not really work. It's a lot of that's fun. A birthday so, party. Um, <laughs> another thing that's really popular that I get a kick out of is, is the chalk art challenge. Yes. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So actually, that was one the the event that actually started Dragon the Lake. That was um, an original. And of course, we are the art center. Um, we want. Um, we we want everyone to come and register. If you um, take take your art to the to the uh, pavement, um, we will provide um, some supplies for you. But all of the rules and regulations are on the website. Um, we do still have some entries open. Again, cash prizes um, for winners. And it's all all artistic levels, you know. And that's mm -hmm. one of the art center's main goals is to bring art to the community, no matter what your artistic level is. You know, no matter your age or where you are in life, like art is for everyone. And yeah. the chalk art um, program is a really good way just to put your skills on on display and just bring the whole community together. Right. So there's different categories for students and teams. You can get a team together. If it's not oh. something you want to compete on your own, you can get a group of friends together. And it's really a fun event. Joe, well, we can do it together. And I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just draw like a stick. I'll lay there. Like, it'll be you can do a <laughs> police outline. outline Perfect. Around. We can do that. We'll win. That's very creative. There's a lot, <laughs> a lot of creative uh, now, ideas come out of this. Did you get your request in not to rain that weekend? Uh, oh. Make sure you put I that I was really hoping in. you would not say that. <laughs> like, We're getting it out of the way. Right, <laughs> There's no rain. No, it never rains in Lake Orion. There you never. go. That's right. I've never um, <laughs> and then, of course, the whole thing wraps up on Sunday with the popular dragon boat races. I understand you're still looking for teams. Yes. We are, yes, yes. We are still looking for teams. Um, it is such a blast. Um, just imagine a 44-foot boat um, <laughs> with... 21 of your most favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> um, all skill oh. levels are welcomed. Um, our, all skill levels are welcome. We will provide a steer person for you to keep you on course. Um, but it is just, it's a blast. And mm -hmm. it's all about just having fun and meeting new people. Even if you don't have 21 people, you can register as an individual. Um, or register your register your um, team, and if there's a few that do fall off, you know we have individuals that can fill in for you. So it is so much fun, and it's something that you definitely um, have to be there to experience. It's yeah. also um, a great way for um, your company to get involved. Let's sure. say like mm -hmm. a certain restaurant wants to rival the restaurant next mm -hmm. door. It's fun to get teams going, kind of competing against each other, and mm -hmm. a great way for nonprofits if you want to get a boat together and you know 
race advertise and race for your nonprofit. It's a really great way to get involved in the community. And there's yeah. recognition for team spirit yes. and yes. Uh, best you can drummer. see in the video that everyone just yes. has yeah. a black yeah. drummer, dressing up costumes. and acting crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Bring on the costumes because <laughs> that is uh, that yeah. that is like one of the best awards. There. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. And um, you do get a practice day on Saturday. So mm -hmm. you're not going into this blind. We prepare you and you're you're ready to race and you, you know what you're doing by the time mm -hmm. Sunday comes around and it's heats, um, you're um, battling down to your last um, final three. Yeah, um, and you're playing for that coveted dragon yes. trophy you saw Trophies at the beginning of the video, a big wooden dragon that has a little nameplate for all the winning yeah. teams mm -hmm. over the past few years. Um, the Island Bombers for a number of years were the dominant team and then that team sort of got <laughs> dissolved and then uh, the Bernie Directive oh is the team to beat now so yeah, right. you got to yeah. knock them off their little pedestal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well you know this year Myers is our presenting sponsor and they are bringing on a team and they are oh. excited. Mm -hmm. So you know what, Bernie? You, you better register your team. <laughs> I haven't seen you yet. Throwing down the gauntlet. Yeah. Take care, Bernie Directive team. Oh, I that's can so tell great you, to bring my It's really fun. It's yeah. really fun. It's not hard to do. I've done it twice, and I went in totally not knowing what it was going to be like. They do train you. It is a lot of fun, so I highly recommend um, Awesome to watch, too. It's and, great. Um, you know, there'll yeah. be shuttles going back and forth. All that will be on the website, too. And the weekend of, we'll have um, schedules posted and put on social media to kind of mm -hmm. figure out where to go and what time. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, I had heard some talk about uh, getting the high school involved, possibly on Saturday. Has that been confirmed? Yeah, that is something that we are working on. Um, it should be confirmed this week. Um, we really wanted to get the younger crowd um, involved. And, um, and you know, all the football teams, there's been some interest in that. And oh, yeah. Nobody's more competitive than football teams. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, so we're we're excited. Sure. We're excited to get that the button that buttoned up um, and announced that you know we're going to have the high schoolers out. So and yeah. are they going to be paddling those same uh, yes. boats? Yes, yes, wow. yep. And they'll be it'll be on Saturday. Um, and of course, since they are young and um, athletic. No practice for them. We're just gonna throw them in. <laughs> <laughs> a t a boat filled with high school football players are the, they got to warn them that there's a speed limit on the lake. I know. <laughs> They're going to create nope. a rooster right. tail as they go down the lake. That's going to be terrifying. That would be cool. <laughs> so we'll have the two separate days for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, I don't think any of us yeah. want to compete against the, the, the young guns but there. But no, thank possibly you. Possibly having, you know, mm -hmm. other high schools and through mm -hmm. the surrounding yeah. areas. Oh, and, wow, yeah, trying to get as many people as possible yeah. involved and thing, into yeah. our downtown area. That'd be great. Yeah. So to find out more information and to get involved, uh, tell people how they yes. can get, uh, find out. Please go on to our website, www.dragononthelake.com. And um, there's so many ways to get involved. Um, we didn't, there's something for everyone on the weekend. Um, there's a merchant's market. We'll have local artists and crafters come out. There's going to be food trucks out. So you have great food. Don't forget the booze. There'll be booze as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, it, it's going to be a great time. Even for the kids, there's going to, we have a kid zone with uh, live entertainment um, and kid activities um, for Saturday and Sunday. So there is something for everyone. Bring the family out. It's going to be a blast. And um, mm -hmm. it's a great way to just say bye to summer and get the kids ready for um, to go back to school. Yeah. And that, that <laughs> website's a great tool if you're mm -hmm. interested in being a vendor, signing up for dragon boats, um, the kids zone, anything, there's a slot on the website to fill your application out right mm -hmm. online. So it can all be submitted there and we'll contact you after we receive the applications. Mm -hmm. And info at orientartcenter.org if you have any email questions, you can always send us an email. Mm -hmm. and we'd be happy to answer the question. Right Will the there. Art Center be open to the public that weekend? Uh, is there any exhibits or anything going on that weekend that uh, you know of? There we are actually holding off on our um, next um, exhibition that's going to be in September, um, okay. but the center will be open for um, volunteers and um, kind of a home base for that um, type of event. Um, and we are looking for volunteers, so if you okay. want to go online and sign up to actually work the event, it would be a great way to get involved in the community. What's the theme of the next exhibit, uh, art exhibit? The next one is going to be portraits and pottery. Ooh. So, yeah, which we're all really excited about. And that should run about four weeks long, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
cool. The, uh, uh, at the uh, Dragon on the Lake uh, weekend, the Art Center usually has a tent uh, where they mm -hmm. have pottery and yes. stuff on display, and they usually do demonstrations, and I'll see mm -hmm. someone with the spinning wheel making pottery on the street. Yeah, and we'll have that really again, yep. We have all of our potters coming out to give demonstrations, and hopefully they'll be selling some of their artwork there, too. That's there awesome. Yeah. Perfect. It's a great time. I yeah. mean, I, I, I really look forward to it, it every year. So much going on. That's, mm -hmm. It's just great. I'm excited. All right. Well, any, anything else? Any parting thoughts? Uh, <laughs> we're just excited yeah. to, you know, host it again. And, you know, after um, everyone not going out in 2020, last year was, you know, our first stepping stone in this year. We're just hoping to get it bigger and bigger and just involve as many people as possible because, like you said, it is a, a heritage of Lake Orion. And to be able to share the event and the love of art in the community is just really important to everyone at the Art Center. So mm. we're very awesome. excited for the event. Great. Yeah. Good. We're All looking right. forward to it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having, Thank us. You for having us. All right. Coming up next, uh, there's no shortage of music and concerts in the community. Uh, the DDA has their um, their LO Live in downtown Lake Orion at the gazebo. Um, and uh, there's always great music there. Uh, what is it, Wednesdays? Every Wednesdays so. in, yep. in Children's Park there? At the gazebo. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And recently we uh, recorded A.J. Lee in Blue Summit. And here's a clip from their recent performance. Hold on to your hats. The big one is coming to Friendship Park on Friday, August 5th from 5 to 9 p.m. Orient Township brings you the 18th annual Big Rig Gig Spectacular. See trucks, tractors, diggers, dozers, buckets, and backloaders side by side. Load up the entire family to see fire trucks and police vehicles. One night only. One night only. One night only. Come early, stay late for the insanity, and don't forget your camera. Admission and parking is free, free, free to the public. That's Friday, August 5th, Friendship Park, Big Rig Gig. We're going to do another original one. This is uh, one I wrote about a long distance relationship. This is called Two Mine. Thank you. 
Another great performance over mm -hmm. at the Gazebo LO Live concerts every Wednesday. Wildwood concerts every what Tuesday? Tuesdays are free. Yeah. Tuesday free free day, and then the weekends, of course, are the yeah. The, so much to do around here. I know. Um, you will have a, an event coming up. You want to talk about yeah. with the chamber? Yeah. For the we're having our third annual Women in Business Conference, um, and we're doing it this year at the Buell Estate, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, in Addison Oaks, I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been to a couple of banquets there, a couple of weddings there. It's beautiful. Um, it is a historic home. Um, but it's, um, it's on the 31st of this month, and we have three wonderful speakers. There's Carol Kane, and she, is with, uh, she does a show called Michigan Matters. We have Karen Drew, and then we also have um, Lauren Royston. And so wonderful speakers lined up. But I wanted to mention that, I mean, even though it's a women in business conference, it's not just for women. We're opening the invitation up for anyone who wants to come and hear inspirational stories from these talented ladies. So, um, you know, registration is open. If you have any questions, give us a call at the chamber. But we're really looking forward to this. It's going to be beautiful. It's enchanted woodland theme. So we're going to decorate it all nice and have a lunch and, uh, you know, hear What from would you say is the message of this conference? What, what you are know, you trying to accomplish with it? When, when we first started this, in 2018, we were talking about it. As a matter of fact, Mo, who was just here, was instrumental in, in sort of helping us get to this part. She, she helped come up with some of the concepts for women in business. Um, it, it was just sort of giving a, a voice to, to, to women who, who are in the work world, whether they're entrepreneurs or they work for a corporation or an organization, you know, nonprofit. Um, you know, we have unique stories to tell, just like everyone else, but, but I think that the membership at the time wanted to do something specific to women in the workplace. And so um, it's just inspirational stories. And this year, um, connected to women in business, is we also have OWLS, Orion Women Leaders mm -hmm. Group, and it's a networking group. And, and so this year we're focusing on um, philanthropy. So a lot of our members will reach out to, I think it's September, I'm hoping I'm getting this right. Uh, September, we're going to focus on um, the Daisy Project. Oh, yeah. So they're going to come and they're going to speak to us 
about how that, that whole thing started and, of course, try and sell tickets for Lollapalooza, which is their big thing happening in, in September. September. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's like a mentorship thing if, you know, if you're, you, you know, just want to be supported by someone who's been in, in business and, and, you know, can help you, you know, get to, and, I, you know, I used to own a business a long time ago and I, at, at the time, I didn't know about the chamber really and I didn't have any support and, you know, it would have been nice to have people to connect to who've been through some of the similar things that I had been through. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do, is that's connect awesome. those dots. That's great. Yeah. Good luck with that. Thank that's you. That's at the end of the month. Yes. So the 31st? 31st of August, yes. Awesome. All right. Open to everyone. Great. Um, and uh, there's an event coming up this Saturday over at the Orient Veterans Memorial, mm. which is just an amazing resource here in Lake Orion. Uh, Coffee with a Veteran. I think they do this twice a year or yeah, so. so. Uh, you can come down, veterans are there, you can sit, chit chat with them. And they actually mm -hmm. have uh, sort of a program going this year. Yeah. I don't know if that's new or if they've always done that. Uh, but they're going to have speakers, uh, someone representing uh, the Model A Car Club is going to be there. Um, Alana Hart, who we know and love here at ONTV, she's with the Home Depot Foundation. Uh, they installed the Victory Garden over at have the... You seen that victory garden it's amazing i've it's eaten a uh, tomato off the vine there. i might have picked a tomato off <laughs> it's it's really awesome it and is. they're always always adding new things over at the veterans memorial uh we had a couple of representatives of the veterans memorial in the studio recently and they came in to talk about uh this upcoming coffee with the veteran let's take a look Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway, and today I'm joined by two distinguished guests, Bob Watros and Charles Haskin of VFW334. How are you both doing today? Doing fantastic, and thank you so much for having us here today. Absolutely, and you guys have a very important event that's coming up this Saturday called Coffee with a Vet. Talk to me about that. Okay. Wait, Bob. Well, I think what it started with, like Chuck said, 10 years ago, uh, man or a sailor by the name of Joe Zeke which started it and he wanted to let young people know and talk to a real veteran and I think that's the way the memorial started was through Joe wanting to uh, get young people involved. Yeah. And how many people have you had in the past attend this event? Not a lot. We're it's kind of scarce but a lot of veterans come because <laughs> <laughs> okay. of the donuts you know but uh, well, that's a key thing to think about. This is coffee with the uh, veteran. At the event itself, we give away free coffee and we give away free donuts. So we have the regulars who come in just looking for a free cup of coffee. Right. But what we're looking for is to be able to share our experiences with the community. Because everything we do is based on, well, the community supports us. This is one way we, we can give back to them. And in the past, we've had kids groups come up there, and we talked to the kids groups. Yeah. And uh, but myself, I joined the VFW by being. I was in therapy. I just had my knee replaced. I had a World War II veteran, Ernie Baker, sitting next to me on another machine, and he says, "What are you doing this weekend?" I says, "Nothing," because I'm walking around on crutches. And he says, "Come on down, coffee with the vet, and see us." So I did, and I enjoyed. And uh, I've been there for about the last eight years. So. And you invite veterans from all different branches of the oh, service. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And they don't have to be from Lake Orion. They can be from Oxford, Metamora, Clarkston, or whatever. Because we're called VFW Post 334 North Oakland, which means all North Oakland area we try to represent. And talk to us about what's the rundown for, for this particular day, August okay. 6th? Well, I think our big part of this program is uh, we got two World War II veterans that are VFW members, and they're going to, one's going to talk about growing up in the 1930s and 40s, and the other one's going to tell a story about being in World War II. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. our chances of having these people many more years are not good, you know, because I think both of them are 97 years yep. old. And they're okay. years old. But they're pretty good World War II veterans. <laughs> Right, and it's and it's about getting the story out. Yes, yes it is. getting that story out. Yeah. Okay, and so then you also mentioned. I'm um, looking at the paper here that you guys have post colors. Talk to me about that. Yeah, our post uh, honor guard will turn around and bring out the American and the POW flag and put it out. Then we'll lead the group in the pledge of allegiance, and once that's done, 
will turn around and introduce everybody that's going to be in the in the ceremony that day. So and what it, does it mean for you getting people to come out and to hear those stories? Are you ever able to share some of your own stories? They don't let us talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, if you get them talking, it's hard to butt in. Yeah. But uh, they're good stories, you know, and we've got about 2,000 bricks in the memorial. I guess I've heard 2,000 stories or more. They never end the same way, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we listen, and yeah. I like to listen to them, and they feel good telling their stories. Yeah. All right, so this event is taking place Saturday, August 6th from 9 to 3? About 9 to 3. Yeah. In the afternoon, starting about 12 o'clock, one of the things the memorial does is collects old flags that need to be what we call retired. Um, we're working, trying to work with some youth groups, but out in the parking lot of the memorial, we'll be um, disposing of around 300 flags yeah, so. uh, for a couple hours there. So okay. that's a key thing we do for the community. And how do you dispose of them? We put them in a very, very hot fire. Okay. Well, they're all folded. Uh, and we have them on a table, and we have a man standing there that unfolds them and looks at them, and he gives us a nod that, yes, retire the flag. Yep. And then we uh, put it in the fire, and we all stand and salute every flag. Yep, every flag. Uh, well, it certainly sounds like something that's yep. going to be memorial memorialized. Um, do you guys have anything else that's upcoming aside from this event? You go ahead. Okay. Sure. Uh, on September 11th, once again, we always have a at the memorial a celebration with the community on the remembrance of the New York's 9-11. Uh, in there, we have different keynote speakers that come in, um, sometimes out-of-state guests come in, and just so we never forget what happened there. Well, we certainly appreciate you guys coming out and dressing in your, would you call it regalia? Our, this is basically our Honor Guard uniform. Honor Guard yeah, uniform. Which, which yeah. use when we go out in the community and uh, do, our, do our thing. All right, well, thank you so much, Mr. Haskin and Mr. Watros. And that'll do it for this edition of Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway. Thanks so much again for watching. And please come out to this event on August 6th, which is this Saturday. Thank you. So they may have mentioned uh, in the interview that one of the things they do at that ceremony is retire flags. Yes. And basically what that means is they have sort of a little uh, bonfire yeah. and uh, burn the flags. And so some people might be horrified, burn your flags. No, but that's actually the preferred way of disposing yep. of old and tattered flags. So if you have some flags that you uh, want to dispose of, don't throw them in the garbage. No. You can take them to the Veterans Memorial and have them disposed yeah. of properly. They even have a little... Um, like a mailbox looking situation where you can put them in if there's no one there yeah. um, to take them. But yeah, don't don't be afraid. That's actually the, the prescribed way to properly dispose of the... Exactly. Flag. Now, uh, driving into the Orient Center today, you probably saw all the election signs yes. lining both sides of the drive. Uh, the sure Orient did. Center, where we are sitting right now, is voting precinct. And uh, today is... Primary election Primary day. Primary election day. Yeah. Now there's not a whole lot on the ballot. Uh, Republicans are trying to whittle down their candidates mm -hmm. for governor and some other uh, positions. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I saw on the ballot, I, I voted today. <laughs> um, uh, Democrats are pretty much running on a post, so not a whole lot at stake for the Democrats today. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, one of the big issues on the ballot today is the millage for NOTA. NOTA. Uh, what are your thoughts on the NOTA millage? My thoughts on the NOTA millage, and I'll just say it outright, I am going to vote yes for that because I think it's an excellent service. Uh, that, you know, I've been working in this building for a long time. Orion Center is, the, that center is right next door. Um, a lot of seniors take advantage of that service to get to grocery stores or doctor's appointments and, and things like that. And I, I think it's also a special needs they service that, sure. that group yeah. too. Um, but I've seen it happen. Um, my mother-in-law used the service yeah. a couple of years ago. Um, it, it, I think it, it needs to continue. Um, yeah. And so. Yeah. On our uh, last episode of Orient Today, we rolled a little video that showed the impact that it has on mm -hmm. seniors and uh, allows them to come here to the Orient Center and, and go out yep. and about. Um, and speaking of videos, we do have a little uh, election uh, promo to uh, encourage you to get out and vote today.
get out and vote. Today's election day, Orion. Make sure your voice is heard and get down to your polling location to vote in the 2022 primary election. Polls open at 7 a.m. and will remain open until 8 p.m. Residents will have the opportunity to cast a vote for their preferred candidate for governor, representative in Congress, state senator, and more for the upcoming general election on November 8, 2022. The primary election also has a ballot proposal from the North Oakland Transportation Authority. They are seeking a five-year millage renewal from 2024 through 2028. For more information about this and future elections, you can visit orienttownship.org and navigate to the Township Clerks page under the Departments tab. There you will find an interactive map to find your polling location, information about absentee voter ballots, districting information, and more. You can also visit Michigan's Online Voter Information Center for specific information about your voter registration, frequently asked questions about voting equipment, registering to vote, and to see exactly what is on your ballot. Visit the website at mvic.sos.state.mi.us. And happy voting, Orion! I know primary elections uh, traditionally have a low turnout. Yeah. Uh, people I talk to go, I don't like the fact that they make you vote all one party. And it's like, but that's kind of what the primary does. It helps yes. each party whittle down yeah. their candidates for the general election in yep. November. Um, and if that's not enough to motivate you to get out to the polls, uh, go out and uh, hopefully support NOTA. Uh, yes. It's such a valuable service here in the community. Yeah. So. Uh, I voted this morning. Polls are open to 8 o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't voted yet, uh, there's still time for you to get out there and vote. I will be leaving the studio with your camera person. <laughs> and we're voting together <laughs> because that camera person is my daughter. And this is this her be, first election? This is her first election. That's so exciting. We're super excited. Wow. I am anyway. I, lo I love to, you know. They've been coming to the polls with me since you guys were little, so. Yeah. Teach them early on how to do everything right. So it's not intimidating because yeah. I think some people do get intimidated. But No, don't worry too much. If, if you make a mistake, they'll arrest you, but it's not that big <laughs> big a deal. It's, it's fine. It's, it's no big deal. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Oh, that's funny. First election. Yeah. Um, as we always say on Orient Today, there's a lot happening in the community uh, coming up. Big rig gig is this Friday and mm -hmm. uh, lots of stuff going on. And as usual, uh, Becky puts together uh, a quick hits to let um, people know what's happening in the community over the next week or so. Let's take a look. On Thursday, the Orient Library will be hosting a STEAM exploration workshop from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Elementary age students are invited to attend and try a variety of STEAM activities. Explore Lego challenges, popsicle stick engineering, and more. For more information, visit OrionLibrary.org. On Friday, the Orient Center will be hosting Senior Social Hour from 11 a.m. to noon. Seniors meet on the first and third Fridays of each month for a chance to get out and socialize. Each week will feature a different topic of conversation so that the participants can enjoy the company of other seniors. Don't miss the Big Rig Gig this Friday at Friendship Park. The event is for big kids, little kids, and kids at heart. Come out and see dozens of trucks, tractors, diggers, dozers, buckets, and backloaders firsthand. The event runs from 5 to 9 p.m. On Saturday, the Wint Nature Center will be hosting a mushroom hike from 1 to 2.30. Come and learn about one of the most important organisms in the food web on a hike to the woods. This program is suitable for ages 8 and up. Pre-register by calling 248-858-0916. Don't miss the 6th Annual Brave the Wave competition this Saturday in downtown Lake Orion. This event brings riders from around the country to compete in jet ski races and freestyle events. Brave the Wave is proud to honor Dutton Farm as this year's charity. You can support Dutton Farm by buying candles and lotions at the event. Donations of cash will also be accepted at their booth. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for scattered storms with a high of 93 and low 70. Thunderstorms on Thursday with high of 80 and low 62. Partly cloudy on Friday with a high of 83 and low 64. Mostly sunny on Saturday with a high of 89 and low 69. And evening storms on Sunday with a high of 88 and low 65. Well, that's it for this week's ONTV TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. One, one event I enjoy shooting video of every year is Big Ray Gig. That's mm. a lot of fun. Have you ever been? Um, when the kids were a little older. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, all the horn honking is a bit much, yeah. but uh, it's really cool <laughs> to see the kids climbing into yes. the vehicles and they come from all over and uh, trucks of all shapes and sizes. And the, uh, when the weather permits, uh, helicopters will fly in. And that. I'll never forget the one year they had a hot air balloon. And I, I was interviewing Jennifer Vesna from Parks and mm -hmm. Rec and the hot air balloon was behind her. And in mid-interview, it started to launch. And <laughs> we always laugh about the fact that she turned and was like, woo! <laughs> and it was really cool that they had a hot air balloon at the big rig gig. So <laughs> if you have little ones, uh, come on down to yeah. Friendship Park and uh, check out all the, the big rigs that are on display. That's a lot of fun. Uh, Saturday, Brave the Wave, we mentioned it in Quick Hits. Um, that's uh, quite the spectacle too. Not only mm. are there jet ski races, but there are um, freestyle exhibitions, flipping and do, doing donuts and all sorts of stuff. It's really something to see. And uh, yeah. usually the, the young people who live on the lake are a little bit of an advantage because they pretty much grow up on the water. Sure. Um, but that's really great to see. And they're competing for cash prizes and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's really um, that's been going on for about five or six years now. Or well, something. originally they had it during Dragon on the Lake yeah. weekend. Um, but then I think they felt that it was taking away from opportunities to practice on Saturday. Yeah. So they moved it to a different weekend, which frees up Saturday for uh, Dragon mm -hmm. Boat Race practice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something to see. It's pretty amazing. It's neat to watch them do those loop-de-loops. Yeah. That's, it's, it it's makes amazing. me dizzy watching it. And they do it <laughs> over and over, and it's like, okay. Yeah. How do you keep your balance after doing that? It's incredible. It's awesome. And then we're about two weeks away uh, from uh, Dream Cruise, which is something mm. I really look forward to. And for those of you who don't know, um, the big kickoff, the ribbon cutting, is on Friday uh, of Dream Cruise in Ferndale at Nine Mile Road in Woodward. Um, and then they have an emergency vehicle parade where once they nice. cut the ribbon, uh, ambulances and fire trucks and police cars go up and down Woodward and that is something to see and Lake Orion usually takes part in that as well and then okay. Saturday's Dream Cruise Dream and I Cruise. love going down there and put my top down yeah. on my Mustang and, and oh, I uh, bet. Oh, cruise I bet that's Dream fun. Cruise that's always a lot of fun oh yeah maybe I should get my husband to bring the the other Mustang home yeah. you know the Maybe yeah, I don't know. yeah, turn Let's some see. heads there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's fun. a lot of fun. That's something I look forward to. So, again, lots of stuff uh, happening. Anything else you're aware of? What's uh, what's coming up? I honestly no. I mean, we've mentioned it all. Yeah. But there's always something fun going on. <laughs> I mean, there's no there's no lack of anything to do around here. Yeah. Um, Concerts yeah. and music Concerts. and things on the water and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, lots to see and do here in Lake Wayne. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that'll pretty much wrap up this episode of Orient Today. Kim, thanks for joining us once again. My pleasure. Always. <laughs> Thank you for asking me. And we'll see you again soon. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you in two weeks on the next live episode of Orient Today. Go boat. <laughs>